Coming up next on At Your Service, we will be discussing how AACPS keeps students healthy and safe. Stay tuned. Welcome to At Your Service, and today we'll be discussing health education, trying to keep our students healthy and safe. And today we have guests with us, Ms. Maureen Grizio. Just thank you for uh, coming today. Thank you for inviting me, Susan. Okay, so can you explain, um, Ms. Grizio, your role in Anne Arundel County Public Schools and its relationship to health education? I am the health education teacher specialist for Anne Arundel County Public Schools. My main role is to increase health literacy um, with the, for the students mm -hmm. of the county. And so can you explain a little bit what is health literacy? Health literacy is for um, our students to obtain and process and interpret information so they can make healthy decisions for now and the rest of their life. Okay, so, you know, we, we talk and one of our main focus is wellness in mm -hmm. Anne Arundel County Public Schools. And so, why health education it seems to be like a complement to wellness, as we know, because right. it's health. But can you talk a little bit about the importance of health education? Health education makes the biggest impact for our students um, with wellness and health, but health teaches students how to save a life, how to re reduce risky behaviors, and how to increase their wellness. And so when we think about, you know, health education, can you talk a little bit, are you, um, do you have a particular student level? Are you from pre-K to 12? Can you talk a little bit about what that looks right. like? We are K through 12. We have a middle school program for 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. We have a high school program. We also have some electives in high school. 5th mm -hmm. um, grade, we work with the reading, um, and we incorporate the health skills into the 5th grade reading course. And then in K through 2, we have Move, 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 where we incorporate health education into the course through movement. Okay, so let's look at, can we just talk a little bit first about the younger kids? Okay. You know, um, we can talk a little bit about pre-K and elementary. What are some of the things that you, that the health um, curriculum provides specifically to help students in wellness and safety? In fifth grade, we talk about the health skills. Um, we'll have a list of reading books, for example, the Butter Battle Book, mm -hmm. and in that book, there's conflict. Um, so that's a great opportunity to talk about conflict resolution skills. So we talk about the conflict resolution skills, we model how to resolve conflict, and then we allow the students time to practice it for a real life situation. So that's great because that's the whole idea of social emotional mm -hmm. learning and really pulling that in together and then having students practice that. Exactly. Conflict, you need to know how to resolve that. Mm -hmm. That's a life skill. So some of the earlier topics as well, what are some of the items that parents, that you know, if parents are watching today, mm -hmm. that they're able to reinforce with their elementary school students? Elementary, we do talk about nutrition and okay. my plate and how to make healthy choices. Um, first grade has uh, um, dental health, how to take care of their teeth. Um, the lower grades, we have more content, um, fitness and nutrition, how to exercise daily, what are some good exercises, um, just helping around the house to keep moving. All right, that's awesome because the earlier they get those great habits, mm -hmm. you know, and they incorporate those in, in their in their home life and their daily life, then they'll stay healthier. Exactly. So let's transition a little bit to middle school. Middle school is that in-between mm -hmm. stage where developmentally, you know, they're going through puberty. What are some of the main focuses? I mean, whether it's through sixth, mm -hmm. seventh, and eighth, or in a holistic fashion. In middle school, we do talk about prescription drugs. Okay. We talk about tobacco, but now we do also talk about electronic devices for nicotine, um, alcohol, marijuana. We do talk about diseases, cardiovascular disease. We do talk about family life and human sexuality, um, mental health, communication, um, suicide and depression. So, you know, when I think about how um, our culture has changed, mm -hmm. we're looking at tobacco, but it seems like the whole vape with the jewel seems to be a huge factor for young adults mm -hmm. today within middle school and high school. Correct. Um, is that something that, you know, Anne Arundel County has really incorporated in that prevention piece? Yes. Um, our teachers keep up to date with all the current trends. So with the state and working with the teachers and other professional organizations, we keep up to date what's trending in mm -hmm. our county. Um, we also work with the CDC. They have the Youth Risk Survey. So mm -hmm. we actually get, get the data from the CDC that tells us what our kids are doing and not doing. Gotcha. 
So what do you think when you when you when they're transitioning out from middle school to high school? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, you know, what are you seeing or what are your health teachers talking about what they're seeing kids? you know, being influenced or having to deal with more today. Is there anything in particular? Um, like the most common, I think in the whole state and in our county, I think stress, mm -hmm. um, how to manage stress, Jules, mm -hmm. um, who's influencing you on Jules, and prescription drugs, how to take them the proper way, what's gotcha. misuse and what's abuse. Mm, that's really interesting, especially that um, the influence on whether mm -hmm. it's peer pressure at the middle school to high school, um, you know, and just having students mm -hmm. talk about their experiences and how to keep themselves safe, even though it might be a friend that's right. offering them to do something they shouldn't really be doing exactly. health-wise. And so at the high school, so at the middle school and high school, there has, there's, you know, we have, you have the health standards, mm -hmm. but at the middle and high school, is it a health instructor that are typically teaching their health curriculum? Typically it is a health okay. instructor teaching okay. the course. So at the high school level, what are some things we have, you were talking about you, there's particular courses that you offer for high school students. We do offer general health education, um, which covers a few more topics than the middle school. And we do have an elective, for example, sports medicine, which is very popular. Okay, so health education is a half a semester course. Mm -hmm. It is a graduation requirement. Yes, it is. Um, what are some other topics in um, that they that particular course might incorporate, mm -hmm. or the level of um, information for for students? Right. Um, very similar. They have more. The topics go a little bit deeper on prescription drugs. Um, addiction is added to it. Okay. We do um, more projects, performance assessment. But the most important part is in health education at any grade level. It's not just the knowledge that we teach. We all also teach the health skill okay. so together with the knowledge and the health skill that's how we're going to change the behavior so can you give me an example because I know that I might understand yeah. that but just for you know a parent or a student sitting at home what does that look like okay. we have many health skills um, okay. we have self-management we have advocacy we have analyzing influences um, we have accessing valid and reliable information we have decision making goal setting and interpersonal communication okay and so, for example, if I was sitting in a particular class mm -hmm. and I was, you know, it could be, um, let's say, alcohol unit, mm -hmm. what kind of skill would the teacher want the student to display? Is it almost like a project-based learning option? We have a little bit of everything. We want to start off lower with the lower skills. Mm -hmm. To be health literate, the students need to start at the lower skills, analyzing influences gotcha. um, and accessing information. So for prescription drugs, um, accessing valid information is the most important so mm -hmm. when I see a prescription is it reliable what's its purpose is it for me or is it for a family member so I mm -hmm. need to know only to take it if it's for me and what are the warning signs gotcha um, and then they could work their way up to one of the bigger skills which is advocacy mm. once I know my content then how can I be an advocate for myself and others and share the information with other people on the dangers of jewels right and so that they're able to understand the yes. differences and not, and even if they have somebody influence them, that they're able to advocate and build those skills so that they're able to resist. Exactly. And to be able to say no. Can you talk to me a little bit about, um, I, I always think about the parent piece mm -hmm. because we've all, most people have gone through school, mm -hmm. right? So I think sometimes they think education is still the same today. Mm -hmm like when I went through it 30 plus years ago. Right. But what are some of the most Im important topics that parents really need to keep their eyes open about when they have those young, you know, those adult moving into mm -hmm. adolescence from middle to high school? What are some of the things that they really need to become more educated about mm -hmm. on their own? And how could they do that? Okay. Great question. As we mentioned, the jewels, um, Correct. prescription, um, pr um, proper use, misuse, abuse, and online safety. Okay. Um, we do talk a lot about online safety, um, not to you know share the passwords, what to do to be safe. Um, we recently introduced sexual abuse, mm -hmm. um, what to do, who to report it to, um, what it is, uh, that it's not their fault. Right. So a lot of those topics are new. Okay. So when you think about how, where, where, if I was a parent, where would I go? 
like if you think about if mm -hmm. I have an issue about um, online safety, okay. who could a parent reach out to? Great question. Our website on Anne Arundel County Public Schools, if you go to academics, to health education, we have everything we teach there. And then we also have a list of resources for parents and guardians according to each subject. And that's great because I know we also have that huge booklet that's online, just a parent resource guide. That's a great one too. So, and even at the school, so if a parent would like to reach out mm -hmm. to the school or the school counselor and they could do a referral, you know, if there was something mm -hmm. in particular that they would be interested in knowing. I just think that it's not just health, yes. but we, as a school system, there are so many people that could point them mm -hmm. in the right direction. I agree. Um, with those wraparound services mm -hmm. for wellness and safety, and I think that's critical. Um, just a little bit about high school. You mentioned another course aside from health being a requirement, mm -hmm. but is it um, sports medicine? Sports medicine, we have health professions, we have um, a drug, drugs in society, and a human sexuality course. So typically when you think of um, sports medicine, what are some of the options if you're interested in health or physical mm -hmm. education for wellness and safety? Um, what would a sports medicine class, what would I you know, encounter if, I, if that was something I would select? It's a very popular course in the high schools. It talks about the athletic trainer, the profession, and how to treat the athletic injuries. Okay, so a lot of it is about athletics, mm -hmm. prevention, and then, you know, if there was an injury, then they would be able to assist exactly. in taking care. So, you know, are you seeing such an interest in um, health education type courses? Are you seeing an increase in students being aware of you know, health and wellness around sports? Yes, I do see an increase, and I think every year we get more and more courses. So, and I think that's mm -hmm. a wonderful option because I think about post-secondary options mm -hmm. for students oh, yes. with college and career ready, mm -hmm. and I think a piece of that is, you know, students finding their niche exactly. in the area of health and, you know, and physical education mm -hmm. and wellness, so I think that's a wonderful opportunity. Um, when we think about wellness, and I know that in our school system, that we have a wellness committee, mm -hmm. you know, at the district level that really focuses on student wellness. Can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about the components of wellness and the purpose of that committee? Because I know Anne Arundel County Public Schools is very committed. Yes. And so if you could just mention that a little okay. bit. Um, the components are the staff wellness, school wellness, physical education, health, um, the community wellness, there's all of it together. So the schools now are making a wellness team Okay. And they're increasing wellness by having um, certain activities for the staff, having healthy options at meetings, mm. maybe having an event after school for yoga for the staff. Um, they're doing more brain boosters, or they used to call them brain breaks in the classroom. So when the students are in class, every 20 minutes they'll stop and do an exercise. So they're finding all these ways to help the staff, the community, the teachers to just increase their wellness. So it's interesting because it's not just the students. Anne Arundel County is also looking at the wellness and the self-care of all their employees yes. and even that tied to the community. So I think that's a wonderful aspect mm -hmm. of you know wellness and safety and health. Um, we're going to take a short break, but when we come back, we're going to continue our discussion. So stay tuned. The Cafe at Maryland Hall is a collaborative venture between Anne Arundel County Public Schools and Maryland Hall for the Creative Arts. The culinary arts students of the Center of Applied Technology South not only prepare the wonderful food items, they also manage and staff the cafe. Patrons may enjoy a treat or a cup of coffee while also enjoying exhibits and performances from artists in the AACPS PVA program and local art community. This amazing collaborative partnership gives the community an opportunity to experience awesome food and customer service in a rich, artful atmosphere here in the community's art center, our vibrant and exciting Maryland Hall. So we were talking a little bit um, about the wellness committee at the board level. And so the one piece I wanna kinda go back to is a little bit about our connection to the community with mm -hmm. your wellness committee. Can you talk a little bit about that? Um, with the wellness committee, with I know with health, we have a lot of connections with the community for guest speakers. Okay. Um, the health department is a great 
community mm -hmm. partnership. We work with them a lot. They share resources. Um, they're on the wellness committee too. And so can you talk to me a little bit, and we're gonna, I'm gonna bring in the health mm -hmm. department. So you have some required skills that students need to know about yes. by the time they leave and graduate from 12th grade. The CPR today is very different than when I went Correct. to school. So can you kind of tell parents what that looks like today, just so that they have some frame of reference of what their child or their student mm -hmm. is actually learning? Um, I know back in my day we did mouth-to-mouth -mouth yes, CPR, we did. but today they just do hands-only. American mm -hmm. Red Cross um, Heart Association said that's all they need is the hands-only, so the kids, the students in high school are doing hands-only CPR. Wow, that's real yeah. different, very different. And so what are some other items that, or topics that is also, you know, a skill-based requirement for students in participating in health? And um, according to Comar, consent is required, okay. sexual abuse is required, and heroin and opioids. So before I'm gonna, we dive into yeah. these topics, because they're pretty, you know, um, deep yes and uh, very controversial for mm -hmm. many people and they have very strong feelings for them can you talk to me you keep mentioning Comar okay. so to the viewing audience for parents and students what basically is Comar it's the code of Maryland regulation so it's what the rules we follow in our curriculum right. for health education right and so another way I was like it's a bit pretty much the law that we got it's our guide you know yes. that we have to things that we have to cover mm -hmm. right so let's like go back to those skills, mm -hmm. right? So we talk a little bit about, you know, drug awareness mm -hmm. and, and, you know, abuse is pretty much, in, not only in health, but in student services. In my world, yes. we work with students and families and try to get them the help or the outside resources that they need. Mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about opioids? Because that seems to be a focus yes. through legislation, through Comar. Mm -hmm. Um, in the lower grades, we do talk about what might lead to it. We talk about the prescriptions, how to read a label, how to take it the proper way. Um, and then when we do talk about heroin, we talk about the consequences um, and addiction. And we do also talk about, well, who do you call in case of an emergency? And our students all have the crisis number on the back okay. of their ID card, so that's always the first number we point to. That's fantastic. I mean, it's just such a huge mm -hmm. problem across the country, and I know that you know the governor has yes. taken a real look at the opioids, and we have um, not my backyard kind of mm -hmm. um, presentations, and I know that you're all involved in yes, that information. Are. So I think that's imperative. But I think parents really need to mm -hmm. keep an eye and see what's happening um, in their communities, and just staying yes. abreast of that as well. And that's also goes back to your idea of like medicine mm -hmm. and you know that's self-management there and the health skill of that our high school has a program when they are finishing learning about all the drugs and the consequences they okay. actually make a personal plan on how to keep the medicines in their home safe is it to keep them in one room locked up or is it to drop yeah. them off at the drop-off box at every police station where they have that green container mm -hmm. where you could drop off any prescription drug that you do no no longer need Right, and it's really important because sometimes I used to put them just up in my cabinet. Yes. And then I'd be cleaning out my cabinet mm -hmm. and I'd be like, this is like five years ago. Yes. You know, some old antibiotics. So I think that having those drop-off points are critical right. and critical for parents to, you know, mm -hmm. utilize those. And so what are some other items that are required under Comar that the state feels are necessary information and skills that students need well, the to next be aware one, of? The next one would be consent. Okay. Um, consent is when you have mutual, um, voluntary, conscious agreement for an activity. Okay. And so are there mm. different levels or forms? Where does consent play in for parents? They're not going to understand exactly what that means. Um, consent in eighth grade and high school, we talk okay. more about sexual consent. Okay. It has to be a verbal yes. Um, mm -hmm. It has to be mutual. They have to be conscious. So that means they have to be awake. They can't be under the influence of alcohol or other drugs. Okay. And so it's an agreed upon. Yes. Right. So I think that's important as well because sometimes in the past people might not be so clear what that means. Correct. And there's a lot of information out there that not, might not be accurate information Correct. for students. Mm -hmm. And so to really to clarify that for them mm -hmm. at middle and high school level is, is critical. Right. You know. And in the lower grades we just talk about the word consent mm -hmm. for any activity. So we might play an activity or, or right. a bingo or signing a card and they have to ask consent if they could do it. So we, we start learning about it in that fashion. 
That's that's awesome. I know you have another um, um, area called Stop the Bleed. Yes. Can you talk a little bit? And is that a partnership with the health department, or is Stop, it just Stop the Bleed is new? Okay. Um, actually, we worked with the fire department. Okay. And the nurses, but okay. it actually came from Connecticut after the Sandy Hook. Um, oh, okay. Incident. So the, the group there created Stop the Bleed program to teach how to put on a tourniquet and how to mm. pack a wound. And it's going, a lot of counties are doing it. And we had someone come here, we had a student from a school talk about it and the fire department was doing it. So the fire department actually trained all our high school and middle school teachers um, to perform wow. the program. So that's, our high schools are performing it. Wow, that's amazing. And so. Um, just that partnership with the, the fire department mm -hmm. and our conversations we've had around the health department yes. and having other people just mm -hmm. kind of like help us with work together. Yeah, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, I do want to talk a little bit about, I think sometimes we wonder how do we get the information we do? Aside mm -hmm. from regulation, like how do we select the books? How do we select mm -hmm. the resources? Can you talk a little bit um, to the community about they're just not pulling things exactly. off. So can you talk about how we decide upon, as a system, just your process of resources? Okay. Great question. Um, right now we're starting to collect resources already for next year. So okay. what we do is if a teacher has a resource, or if I have a resource, I have to go online to our county website and we have a page just for resources. And we have to request for that resource to be evaluated. Okay. Then after that, we'll take the list of all the resources, and we have a team that actually reviews the resource. The team consists of a coordinator, teachers, the health department, student services, parents, and sometimes mm -hmm. students. And then as a team, we look at each resource one at a time. Mm -hmm. We make sure it aligns with our standards. We make sure it's age appropriate, and we make sure that the content is accurate. Okay. And then after that, we, as a group, we will decide if it's appropriate for the curriculum. And so it's just not okay. Here I go. I like this video, yeah. but it's if it gets a deep vetted. discussion and everybody looks at it, and we want everybody's opinion. That's wonderful. Yes. I think that's important. Yes. I think it's a process. It's kind of the behind the scenes. Yes. And if you're not in education, mm -hmm. or you just you know you're not right. a teacher, you won't understand that the it's process. just yeah. And yeah. I think that's important because I think you know people have their own ideas. Yes. But to be able to make sure to ensure, because you and I have worked on MLI. Yeah you know, mm -hmm. quite often about different topics, but just ensuring that the information is accurate. Correct. You know, and vetted through a proper and channel. Copyright. And exactly. most importantly, will it engage the students? Right. All our students. Right. Yeah. Right. So let's transition a little bit. I think one of the things that I think Anne Arundel County does is great in um, providing information to mm -hmm. students and parents about a variety of topics. And one of the topics that we talk about mm -hmm. is suicide prevention. Okay, mm -hmm. can you talk to me a little bit about what we're doing in our school system in relationship to your office? Okay, um, suicide is in our state standards, we, um, so it's required to teach. Most of our information we do get from your website. So we like to say the same thing and have the same message, mm -hmm. message so the students will see it from your office and our office. Correct. But basically we'll say what it is, what are the signs, you know, like giving away prized right. possessions, saying that they want to hurt themselves, but right. the most important part is when a friend does do that or a loved one, what do you do? What's a valid and reliable source um, that you could talk to? Like the crisis hotline. Right. And so I think, you know, the partnership that we've had mm -hmm. with the Office of School Counseling and health is critical, um, just so that people recognize the signs, mm -hmm. just recognize the signs of early, of depression, Yes, you know, and of not coping, mm -hmm. and to be able to reach out and tell a trusted adult, yes. or having another friend come to a, a trusted adult is critical. And not to keep it a secret. No, and I think yeah. we have made such gains mm -hmm. in that area. We, you know, we refer more people yes. to mental health agencies, or, you know, mm -hmm. if, if it's, something that I think is a chronic condition. Yes. But we do have our regulations in place in Anne Arundel County, so if a student does make mm -hmm. a gesture exactly. or a statement that we have a plan in place. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's always nice to be able to have those structures in place so that all employees can follow them, right. not just health teachers right. or school counselors, but that we are as well as, you know, mandated to, mm -hmm. to act in the best 
interest of all students. How to recognize those signs and report it. Yeah. The other um, piece I want to ask you a little bit about, and I know you, you talked a little bit about this, was past legislation for Lauren's Law. Is it Lauren's Law or Aaron's Law? Aaron's Law. Aaron's Law. There's so many laws mm -hmm. right now, but you know, it seems that there's a lot of attention right now with legislation impacting health. Mm -hmm. There is. And so, what, what are your thoughts about that today? I, Anne Arundel County, we're doing everything that they're passing. So anytime they do pass a law, we usually could say we're doing that already. Mm -hmm. um, when I go to national conventions, it's the same thing. Our health teachers in Anne Arundel County are amazing. They're doing it already, and they're doing a great job at it. Um, Aaron's Law, we just we updated new lessons this summer with the health education teachers and myself. So they made lessons on what is sexual abuse, mm -hmm. um, what is grooming. Mm -hmm. um, if you see the signs, who do you report it to? So, you know, with um, Aaron's law that was passed, you know, with the whole, the topic of sexual abuse and grooming, um, what would you advise parents today around that topic? Would you have them, you know, kind of do the research about what is grooming? I think they have a lot of opportunities with music and TV shows or, you know, on the news. Anytime those topics come up, that's a good time to start the conversation and just listen and let their student talk. Definitely. So I think about, you know, in elementary, mm -hmm. many of the, the students are getting that information and mm -hmm. the lessons from the school counselors, you know, and so as they move up to middle and high school, it becomes a little bit more in depth mm -hmm. based on their social emotional level and the maturity yes. level. Um, so when I think um, of the future, and I think about some other topics. Are there other items that maybe are going to be incorporated into health? Because you were talking about pulling some resources. Is there something that maybe the state's looking at that we that needs to be included for future education? Um, the way the state is going right now is taking our core content knowledge of the drugs, the diseases, um, that, all that content knowledge, and placing the health skills together with it. So no longer will we just have the knowledge. The state's pushing that we need the skills. Because we're always going to have a new drug. We're always going to have a new issue. Right. Like Jules were not here five years ago. Right. But no matter what the issue is, if it's a new drug or something else new, right. I still need to know how to make a healthy decision. Mm -hmm. I still need to be an advocate for myself. I still right. need to be able to communicate that I don't like what you're doing or how to be assertive. So the health skills are always going to be able to use. So that's what we're pushing. So that's really important for parents mm -hmm. to recognize that there's always going to be something yes. coming on uh, up the up the pike, yes. you know. But if you have those advocacy skills and mm -hmm. those refusal skills, and they can do that at home, yes. like they could practice with various scenarios or mm -hmm. situations dealing with friendships out in their community or you know on yes. the bus stop you know, how to refuse to or do. Analyzing influences, yeah. what are your values, what are your beliefs, those internal influences. And then discussing the external influences, your friends, your family, the media. Um, wow. How does that all, you know, play in your life? Which ones are positive? Right. Which ones are negative? Well, how do we get rid of the negative ones and how do we increase the positive ones? Well, this was a great discussion we yeah. had today and I just wanted to thank you for being our guest. Thank you. So, thank you for joining us on Ask Your Service. See you next time. Hi, I'm Jeannie Porter. Anne Arundel County Public Schools Department of Transportation is raising the level of awareness for the safety of your children as we transport them to and from school. When a school bus stops to load students, as a driver, this is what you will see. At 150 feet, the bus will activate hazard lights. At 100 feet, the bus driver will activate the amber lights. They will start slowing down. At 10 feet before the bus stops, they will turn on the red bus lights. Their stop sign will come out and students will begin to load. Once all students are on board safely, the bus driver will turn off red lights and move forward. At this time, it is safe for the motorist to resume movement.